Hi guys, Nick here from Technology Lowdown. Today we are looking at the Ubiquiti Nano Beam, which is basically a point-to-point -point link that Ubiquiti has that enables high speeds over great distances. Now, I have this set up in an application where it is approximately 50 meters that uh, the signal needs to travel. So you would generally not expect there to be too many problems with a 50 meter link. However, in, over the last week, I had a fault reported with this nanobeam, which has worked flawlessly for the last number of years, until recently, where it has been dropping out uh, about three times every hour for about a minute and a half at a time. Now, I've got some logs of this, which I can show you, but after spending several days on this and uh, trying to work out what the issue was, I finally resolved it by completing an air view and it turns out there were a lot more frequencies in use than I had originally expected and than I had originally found when I set the link up a few years ago. So today I'm going to take you through what you need to look for when you're setting up the point-to-point -point link in order to ensure that you have um, selected the best frequency to use to ensure stability for your link. So let's get right into it. Um, if you're wondering why it's a different uh, location that I'm uh, doing this video from today, it is because I am traveling for work. Um, and if you have uh, watched uh, my previous video, you will have learned that I am in fact also going to be moving house within the next two weeks. Um, so uh, this might be one of the last videos for about a month while I get settled in the new place. But for now, let's get set up with the Ubiquiti Nano Beam and this point to point link. So just so you've got a picture of the device, this is it here, it's the Nano Beam AC, and it is capable of transmitting Wi-Fi over a distance of zero to five kilometers um, at AC speeds. Um, so I've got this set up and it's worked relatively well up until recently, as I've explained. And I've also got this Nano Station here set up on the same a uh, hockey pole for the aerial and it's operated flawlessly as well. Uh, I know many would probably be against putting the same, uh, putting uh, two wireless bridges on different frequencies on the same pole, but I have not experienced any problems with this uh, approach. Uh, ideally you wouldn't do this, um, but it was the easiest thing to do in the at the community organization that I support. Um, so, uh, so that's an idea of the devices that I um, am talking about here. Um, so I've got like a little screenshot here. So this is the site that we've got. So I've got a point to point link here and uh, going here. So this is the 2.4 gigahertz one. Then I've got on the same pole, I'll just mark it here. I've got the nano beam running across to here. All right, so that distance there, it's not very far, it's about 50 meters. Um, so the signal just goes across this oval right there and uh, then it'll hit the dish. Okay, so it's not very far at all. Here is uh, the receiver that I'm logging in. So when I set up a uh, AirOS link, um, I name them in such a way so that if it is the remote side of the point-to-point -point link, I name in its name, which you can see here in the uh, bar here at the top, is as with a capital R. So that means that it's a receiver, it's remote, so that makes it obvious to me. Um, so that's how I do that. And for the uh, transceiver side, you guessed it, I just put a T at the end of the system name. So this is called Lodge T. The reason it's called Lodge is because it is a student lodge that it is connected to. So as we can see here, this is the transceiver. If I just go to the log here, which I've enabled, you'll see that it is happily uh, getting a handshake every hour. Um, and that just basically means that the link is all good and that it is staying active. Um, I will take you to a device which is the Nano uh, Station, which has been operating without any problems. This is the one on the 2.4 gigahertz frequency. And uh, so we can see here that if we go to the log again, we can see that it happily uh, gets a handshake every hour without um, any problems. And this link has been flawless. So that is what this Lodge receiver, uh, the Lodge T, should have been doing. But uh, as we found out, it's been dropping. 
And we can see here it's uh, reason disassociated because sending STA is leaving or has left. And so from this, uh, y you could expect that maybe there was something that was killing the connection. So like it was an attack of some sort. Um, then we've got, uh, so the handshake completed there successfully, but then look, we've got another D auth. So there were many problems going on with this link uh, when I first found out about it. Um, so there are a few of the symptoms that uh, happen on uh, wireless bridge when there is a frequency that is not quite right. So I'll just jump on over to the 2.4 gigahertz link here. And uh, this is on the transceiver side. So I'm just going to open up AirView. And AirView works the same on the 2.4 gigahertz one. So I'll just open that guy up. And just before I click on that one to launch it there, I'm just going to open up the Java uh, configuration console. And I'm just going to add it to the trusted sites. the transceiver for that uh, connection, two, zero, one. Now this will launch without there being any problems. So it's a Java application, continue. All right, so when we launch AirView, you'll notice that uh, the connection will drop out. So you don't want to do this on something that is in production, but if we just uh, look at this channel frequency area here for a moment, we'll see that it actually cycles through all the frequencies um, that are available to it. And here is that uh, visual representation of the frequencies there. So, if we have a look at this graph, it takes about five minutes till you have enough uh, of an accurate idea of the frequencies that are in use. But it looks so far that um, the frequencies down here between uh, 2405 and 2430, um, they are, seem to be a little bit freer than what the frequencies are between 2435 and 2450. And if I just go to preferences here, I can select a different uh, channel to focus on. So I could select uh, channels. I could drill in a bit further. So I'll select this one, which is going to be in the, looks like the lower end of the uh, channels which are available. Um, so select that one there. And we'll need to gather some more data, but uh, you can see that it looks like it's pretty much free in most of this frequency range. So I dare say this is probably because it's a frequency which isn't usually used within Australia. Um, so that's an idea of how AirView works. So I'll close out of that one now, just so that this um, will come back up into being. And I will show you a um, example of a previous AirView scan which I've run. So here is the um, scan I ran for the um, nano beam. So you need to do this from both sides of connection, uh, hardwired connection to the nano beam. You can just plug straight into the PoE brick that you may be using to power it or into the switch which is powering it but you want to run it from both sides because your laptop needs to receive the data and if you were to do it on the receiving end remotely you would not receive that data back because the connection would drop out as soon as you start AirView. So as we can see here in this scan, so this one here is the transceiver side and this one here is the receiver side. And if we look at the transceiver side here, we can see that between 5150 and 5170, even up to 175, the frequencies are pretty free. Um, even uh, all the way up to 5210, the frequencies are probably okay to at least get a 10 megahertz channel through there at some point, or 20 through at a lower section down there. But then we need to look at the other side. So this um, second uh, 
uh, view here shows the receiver side and we can see that we've got between 5185 and 5210 that uh, the frequency is pretty much clear and that is also reflective of the um, transceiver part here. So that looks like a perfect candidate for the frequency to be selected for the device. And I'll just show you another one down here. So this is um, another range of frequencies in the 5 gigahertz spectrum, which is what the nano beam operates in. And we can just see how flooded that is with um, signal. So this is just an example of what I was facing with this wireless link and why it was dropping out. So it's... Um, not surprising why the link was dropping out um, and I found this was happening across many frequencies so I found this article here which is uh, choosing 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi channels uh, at 2.11 AC in Australia and it's by an engineer from the University of New South Wales and it lists quite clearly here um, the channels which are available for indoor use and then it lists uh, channels 52 through to 144, which um, are designed for pretty much indoor and outdoor usage. But um, the DFS, which uh, basically means that if a radar signal is detected by the access point, because they need to be compliant, the radio signal from your access point will shut down for anywhere between 1 to 5 or even 30 minutes while that radar signal is active and that's just to be compliant with um, laws in the country. So basically for the nano beam link these frequencies were all out of the question and if we look here between 149 and 165 um, these ones are not um, uh, required to be compliant with DFS. Um, but with that means that everyone else was using that frequency as well. So in light of that document we were just looking at where I suggested that between 5220 or 5210 and 5240 we could possibly get something through there, well that just so happens to have been the frequency which I found to work quite well and it is what I'm currently rolling with. So that should hopefully show you how that air view is vitally important for your point to point link in order to make it a stable connection. So it's as simple as running that air view scan and then you can um, be certain that there's no other frequencies around that will interfere with your point to point link. So I hope this video has been helpful to you in finding out how you can get your point to point link set up so that you shouldn't receive those dropouts. I know I found it quite interesting in running those air view scans in finding an available frequency. Um, it's quite easy to do. So look, if you like this video, please like it, or if you want to see more like this, please subscribe to my channel. I aim to release a video every one to two weeks. So thanks for checking. Bye. Uh, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.